Now, uh, my dear pupils, welcome back to the next session. Uh, yesterday, I remember I had promised that when I come in, we shall pick up from where we stopped. So today, allow me to look at the judiciary. Uh, under the judiciary, I'm going to talk about the following points. Number one, we are going to look at the functions uh, of the judiciary. And remember, in the beginning I said that the judiciary is also referred to as the courts. The judiciary is not there when we don't have the court. So on that note, uh, mainly we shall be talking about the courts, or rather the court system in Kenya. So number one, under the judiciary, we shall talk about the functions. Uh, remember I said the functions are also called the duties. Then we shall look at the composition. We shall look at the composition. That is the composition which is the same as the makeup, which is also known as the makeup, uh, or the members who make up the members of the judiciary. Then, lastly, for today, we shall also be looking at uh, the structures, the structures, the structure or the hierarchy, the structure or the hierarchy of courts in Kenya. So please, my dear candidates, and not only this one goes even to those uh, who are in, in standard five. You know this topic starts all the way from class five uh, up to class eight. So on that note, I want to begin uh, one by one by looking at the following. So number one, let's begin. I've said that the judiciary also refers to the court system in Kenya. Then, the functions. This is a very important area because this question, especially to the candidates, this question is somehow very technical, so I want you to lend me your ear, your ears, if not your eyes. So number one, I'm going to begin with the main function of the judiciary. The, what's the main function of the judiciary. Number one, uh, this is to administer the key, or rather the main function of the judiciary, it is to administer justice. The main function of the judiciary is to administer justice. Remember, um, in the Constitution of Kenya, each and every one of us is innocent before the, uh, before law, not unless the court of law decides. So everybody is innocent until proved guilty in a court of law. So number one, this is the main, in fact, for, the, for my candidates, um, brackets you can write main. This is the key, or rather the main function of the judiciary. If you wish, you can also place a star. Then secondly, um, to interpret laws, the judiciary also assist us to interpret what we call laws. As you know, not all of us are lawyers. And even the judges, even the magistrates who work in our courts, they must follow the Constitution. So on that note, it is the judiciary which assists us to know that if I commit uh, such a mistake, then I will be liable for which type of punishment. So on that note, that one is the second function of the judiciary. Then lastly, the judiciary also punishes wrongdoers. So number three, we say that the judiciary punish, or rather punishes wrongdoers. 
It punishes the wrong doers. I know most of you, you learners, you tend to believe that uh, they are the police men and women who are in charge of punishing law breakers. But no, those ones, they just enforce law. Why? You know the stages of criminality in Kenya. One, will be arrested, taken to the police custody or cell, taken to the police station. Then from there, within 24 hours, you are supposed to be taken to the court of law. Now, it is in the court of law where you will meet the judges who will now punish you. If maybe you have done a criminal offense, then the judge can go ahead and say that this one, according to the constitution, such a criminal activity is liable maybe for a one-year imprisonment and maybe a fine of the sum of maybe 10 million Kenya shillings. So that is what we call punishing wrongdoers. So my dear learners, I want to make it clear that uh, the police officers have no power to punish, or rather they have no authority to punish criminals. It is the work of the courts under which fall under the judiciary. So on that note, I'm done with number one, the functions or the duties of judiciary. Allow me now to go to look at number two, where I said we must now look at the composition or the members of the judiciary. So the composition or members of the judiciary. Composition or members of the judiciary, <clears throat> just a minute. Um, under composition, or you see, the judiciary cannot work alone. We must have people to work in those courts. So number one, um, allow me to begin with, these are the following are members of the judiciary. One, we have the person known as the chief justice. So number one, we have the chief justice, the chief justice. The chief justice is very important, why? We say that he or she, he or she is the president, he or she is the president of courts, all the courts in Kenya. So that one is a key function. And remember, the, the, uh, the chief justice of Kenya is none other than uh, Mr. David Maraga, that's the Chief Justice of Kenya. Then number two, um, we have the Deputy Chief Justice, the Deputy uh, Chief, the Deputy Chief Justice, the Deputy Chief Justice. Number three, we also have other judges. We have what we call other judges, other judges and uh, magistrates, other judges and magistrates. Why am I not just saying that judges and magistrates? Because even the chief justice himself, he, he was one a judge, or rather he's a judge. Then even the deputy chief justice, for you to become a chief justice and a deputy chief justice, you must also be a judge. So that is why I'm using the word other judges and magistrates. Then number four, um, we have what we call the chief, chief registrar. We have the chief registrar of the judiciary. We have the chief registrar of the judiciary. Now this one, I want also my learners to be very careful because this area is mainly tested, especially in class eight, that who is the chief accounting officer in the judiciary. So under the chief register of the judiciary, uh, we say that he, he or she is the chief, he or she is the chief administrative, he or she is the chief administrative officer. He or she is the chief administrative officer of the judiciary. 
What does that mean? Um, that means that he's in control of all the accounts, all the finance, which is collected in the judiciary in form of bonds, in form of court fines. Um, then lastly, number five, we have um, other staff members, other staff, other staff members, other staff members of the judiciary, other, other staff members of, other staff members of the judiciary. Um, so my pupils in general, we only have five categories of members of the judiciary. And remember from the onset, when we come to the chief justice and the deputy chief justice, these ones are appointed by the president, but before appointment, their names are submitted to the president by an independent body uh, known as the Judicial Service Commission. That is uh, Judicial Service Commission. In full, we talk of uh, JSC. That is Jud Judicial Service Commission. Then they'll pick some names submit to the president, then from the names, the president will pick one name, each take to the parliament through the leader of majority, then just like I said yesterday, the parliament will vet their names, and then in the long run, if they pass the integrity test, then they will assume office as the chief justice and deputy chief justice respectively. So on that note, I think I'm very clear. Now, um, the same to judges and magistrates, they are also appointed by the Judicial Service Commission. Their names are submitted to the President by the Judicial Service Commission, who then um, accepts their confirmation to become judges. But specifically, magistrates are not appointed by the President. They are appointed by the Judicial Service Commission. So on that note, um, I'm done with the composition or the makeup of the members of the judiciary. Now from there, allow me now to look at the structure or the hierarchy of courts. But before I draw that tree diagram, uh, <clears throat> just allow me uh, to touch or rather to discuss on the types of courts, the types of courts in Kenya. The types of courts in Kenya. Um, number one, we say that are divided into two. So the courts in Kenya are divided into two. They are divided into uh, two categories or groups. So courts in Kenya are divided majorly into two. One, we have what we call the superior courts. One, we have what we call the superior courts. Uh, we have the superior courts. And then number two, we have what we call the subordinate courts. Number two, we have the subordinate courts. The subordinate courts. The subordinate courts. So allow me to go ahead and look at the superior courts. So let's look at the superior, superior courts. Superior courts. This point is also tested. I remember KCP 2017 we had a question which tested on superior courts in Kenya. So kindly lend me your ears, if not your eyes. So number one, uh, these superior courts are further, they are divided into, so are divided, they are divided, uh, they are divided into five categories. They are divided into five categories. Then number one, we have what we call the Supreme Court. We have what we call the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court. The Supreme Court. Uh, the Supreme Court is also called the Apex Court. The Apex Court. The Apex Court. Number two, we have what we call um, we have what we call the Court of Appeal. The Court of Appeal. Court of Appeal. The Court of Appeal. Number three, we have what we call um, 
the High Court. We have the High Court. We have the High Court. Then number four, we have the Industrial Court. Industrial Court. Industrial Court or Industrial Court. The Industrial Court. And then number five, we have what we call, um, from Industrial Court, we have what we call the Land and Environment Court. Land and uh, Environment Court. Land and Environment Environment Court. So my dear pupils, I want to make it very clear that these two courts, that is the Industrial and Land and Environment, these ones are also known as Special Courts. They are Special Courts because they specifically, they were established to specifically deal with special matters. For example, under Industrial Court, uh, this one deals with the matters concerning employment and labor. Then, number five, land and environment. This one deals specifically with matters concerning land. You know, land issues is among the most thorny issues in the Republic of Kenya. So, uh, these two are classified under category courts, but still, they lie under the superior court. So, uh, just quickly, allow me just to look at the Supreme Court in short, the Supreme, uh, the Supreme Court. Now, this Supreme Court is very important. Why? Number one, <coughs> it deals with what we call appeals. It deals with appeals from other courts. So, we can say that um, it deals, it deals with uh, appeals. It deals with appeals from other courts. Then secondly, um, you can remember when we had the 2007 general elections which were very chaotic, uh, there was need to come up with this court so that presidential election petition cases can be challenged there. So it also deals with what we call, uh, it deals with the uh, presidential presidential deals with presidential election petition cases it deals with presidential election petition cases there whereby you saw in 2017 when the nasa coalition went to court to challenge the re-election of president uru kenyatta it was the supreme court which nullified the election so on that note uh, this one is also a very important function um, let's shortly, let us look at the members of the Supreme Court. This one is also a key area, members of Supreme Court, members of Supreme Court, members of the Supreme Court. Um, under the members, um, this one, it has, or rather it is made up of eight members, it is made up of seven members, it has seven members, it has seven members. And who are these members? Number one, we have the Chief Justice. The Chief Justice, Chief Justice. This one is the head of the Supreme Court. He or she is the head of the Supreme Court. Then, number two, we have the Deputy Chief Justice. We have the Deputy uh, Chief Justice. The Deputy Chief Justice. And uh, lastly, we have five other judges five other judges so uh my dear candidates this is just very simple mathematics two plus five uh, this is two people plus five those are seven members who make up the supreme court uh about the high court what you need to know this one mainly deals with what we call criminal criminal and civil cases then we have the industrial court and the land and environment courts, which I already explained. So allow me to forge ahead and quickly look at the subordinate courts. So uh, the subordinate courts, subordinate, subordinate courts, the subordinate courts. Under the subordinate courts, the following are the subordinate courts. So number one, 
We have what we call the magistrate courts. Magistrate, magistrate courts. Magistrate courts. Number two, we have what we call the military courts. We have what we call the military courts. The military courts. Then number three, we have what we call the Cadiz courts. The Cadiz courts. The Cadiz courts. The Cadiz courts. Um, generally, under subordinate courts, they are majorly divided into three. Mainly, we have the magistrate courts, we have the military courts, we have the Cadiz courts. Just quickly, under magistrate courts, they mainly deal with criminal and civil cases, except those of serious mistakes like treason. Treason. A magistrate court cannot deal with a treasonable offense. And what is treason? People who want to overturn the government. That one is what we call a treasonable offense. Alongside that, magistrate courts cannot, can also not deal with what we call cases involving murder. They cannot deal with such cases. So that means that they only deal with the civil cases involving petty issues like robbery with violence and what have you. But uh, in, in case of treason, murder, those ones are, dealed, are dealt mostly with the superior courts. Then we also have military courts. Under military courts, one, they are also called uh, court marshals. The military courts are also called the court marshals. Uh, why are they called military courts? Because they deal with the cases involving mostly people of the Kenya Defense Forces or the military. People who work in the military, their cases are mainly de dealt with the military or court marshals. Um, lastly, we have the Cadiz courts, number one, they are headed by the Cadiz. Then they mainly deal with what we call Islamic marriages, maybe issues of divorce and what have you. So the Cadiz courts mainly deal with uh, cases involving Islamic marriage. And just like I've said, they are headed by the Cadiz, the military. Uh, 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 that is it. So these are the key. These are the key subordinate courts that we have in Kenya. Then lastly, mm, we also have other, other, other subordinate courts. Other subordinate courts. Why am I not placing them under here? Because these ones are smaller. The main ones, subordinate courts, are mainly three. So the other uh, subordinate courts, uh, that are also very cru crucial in the judiciary. Number one, <coughs> number one, um, number one, we have what we call the children's courts. The children's, the children courts. These children courts are also called the juvenile courts. Children courts courts are also called the juvenile courts. So I want to warn you, you seated here, don't say that I'm below 18 years. If I do a mistake, I'll not be arrested and put behind the bus. My friend, if you are capable, arrested, you'll be taken to the juvenile or the children courts. So make sure you take care before care takes you. So on that note, we have the children courts or the juvenile courts. Then secondly, we also have the tribunals. Now when we talk about the tribunals, uh, these ones are established to handle certain or other specific issues. For example, examples of tribunals, you can talk of e.g. the rent tribunal, the rent tribunal. Maybe um, where you are staying, you are unable to pay rent. Uh, your landlord has come there, has thrown away your things your belongings because of failure to pay rent. That one is wrong. Such a person, um, you can take him or her to the rent tribunal, then uh, he'll, be, he'll be in for a rude shock. Why? Even if the person has failed to pay rent, the landlord must give a notice. That's according to the law and not just 
uh, mere words. So on that note, um, we have tribunals. There are several, but I'll just mention the rent tribunal because rent is very common to me and you. Now, we also have the anti-corruption courts. The anti-corruption court. You can see Kenya among the challenges that we are facing today is the issue of corruption. So that is why we have a specific court which is meant to tackle uh, corruption issues in the country. So uh, we have the corruption court which mainly deals. This one deals uh, with the issues. It deals with the issues of corruption. It deals with the issues of corruption. That is to make sure that those people who are found engaging in corrupt activities uh, they are arrested and uh, taken to court. They ca these tribunals cannot punish. They will only they are only there to assist. They are only there to make sure that the people who have done mistakes are taken in court, but they cannot punish you. So they have no authority to punish you. So on that note, um, I think I'm very clear. I've covered the subordinate courts where I've said that the highest, the magistrate court, in fact, from the magistrate courts, just before I forget, I want you to know that the magistrate court, one, you must know we also have the hierarchy of the magistrate courts in Kenya. That one we shall discuss another day. But from top, we have the chief magistrate court, we have the principal magistrate court, we have the senior resident magistrate court, and then we have uh, the resident magistrate court. I think that one is a flashback of class five work, whereby under magistrate courts, magistrate, magistrate, magistrate courts, we have the hierarchy from highest. So I can just use the word hierarchy, meaning uh, from the highest, the hierarchy of magistrate courts in Kenya, the hierarchy of magistrate uh, courts. Actually, from the highest, we have the chief magistrate court, the chief magistrate, the chief magistrate uh, court. And I want you to be very careful because I know the, this question is mainly tested in class 8, class 7, and even class 6, that which one of the following is the highest subordinate court in Kenya? The highest subordinate court in Kenya is chief magistrate court. But if they just leave it, that which one is the highest court in Kenya, then that is when we talk of the Supreme Court. But they add the word, which one is the highest subordinate court in Kenya? Of course, that one is the chief magistrate court. So below the chief magistrate court, we have the principal magistrate court. We have the principal, principal magistrate court. The principal magistrate court. Principal magistrate court. Then number three, uh, we have the senior, the senior resident. We have the senior resident magistrate court, the senior resident magistrate court. And lastly, uh, we have the resident magistrate court, the resident magistrate court, the resident magistrate court. So that is the hierarchy or the structure of the magistrate courts from top to bottom. At the highest level, we have the chief magistrate, followed by the principal, the senior, and the resident. So, just, just like for three minutes. Please. Uh, so, just to wind up, uh, because of time, um, allow me to draw the hierarchy or the structure of the courts in Kenya. structure structure or hierarchy of courts in Kenya. 
So this one is like an, your assignment, but I want, you, I want to draw for you so that we'll just draw, then when I come, we shall revise it during our next lesson. So at the highest level, we shall talk of the Supreme Court. We have the Supreme Court. Below the Supreme Court, we have the uh, Court of Appeal, Court of Appeal. Below the Court of Appeal, we have the High Court. Remember, these are superior courts, the Court of Appeal, Court of Appeal. Uh, below the Court of Appeal, we have the Magistrate Courts, Magistrate, Magistrate Courts, below the Magistrate Courts, I think this one is the last part, then here again, uh, just like I said, uh, Between the Court of Appeal and the High Court, we also have we have the You are ready? Yes, yes. Now, generally, this is what I was saying. Yes? Yeah. My okay? This one? Yes. You see this time. Oh, this one? Yeah. Okay, okay. So, generally, this is what I was saying, that the hierarchy, the structure, uh, the structure or the hierarchy of courts in Kenya, at the top, just like I said, we have the Supreme Court. We have the Court of Appeal. <coughs> we have the the High Court, these three, that is from here to Court of Appeal, then to the High Court, these ones are what we are calling the superior, the superior courts. Then superior courts alongside these others, that is the Industrial Court and Land and Environment Courts. Below that, these three, that is the magistrate court, the court marshals, and the Cadiz courts, these are what we are calling uh, the subordinate courts. So just to end there, I'll urge you to copy or rather to draw this diagram in your books so that in case they draw such a diagram in exam, because I've seen it happening, they will draw maybe place here letter X, maybe place here letter Y, then they want you to insert the correct type of code. So please don't just ignore, make sure that you draw it uh, properly in your exercise books. To end my lesson, I want to leave you with just three questions. Number one.
So these are the questions I want to leave uh, you with. Number one, who is the head of the judiciary? Number two, the highest court in Kenya is? And then lastly, which one is the highest subordinate court in Kenya? Um, thank you very much for listening to me, uh, my dear learners. And uh, just like my colleague was here, I want to ask you to make a passionate appeal that make sure you sanitize yourself now and then. You don't have, you, if you don't have those sanitizers, make sure you wash your hands frequently using water and soap. Thank you very much and have a blessed day.